In this video, I'm going to be doing something a little different. I made doors for my cabinet up here, and I showed an easy way to make frame and panel doors. They look like frame and panel, but they're basically, you know, pieces of plywood with trim attached to it for that appearance. In this video, I'm going to be making what you could call real cope and stick doors. That's the kind of doors you see in a typical you know, kitchen and that have a raised panel in the middle. Now the normal way to do it is with a set of bits like this. These ones will run in a router, but these bit sets here generally are pretty expensive. And I'm gonna show how to do the entire operation without these on the table saw. And that includes the raised panel too. So I've already cut out all the parts to rough length plane them down to the same thickness, and I glued up this uh, three pieces here into the panel that will be the center panel in the door. Now this is not going to be a big door, it's just a sample, more or less just to show the, the process of how you can do this on a table saw. I did a little bit of planning and sketch up and I made this drawing. This drawing will be available on my website. You can go and look at it, see the dimensions that I use the angles I set the saw blade to to get the parts. And the first cut that I want to make will be this angle cut here. Now that angle is 20.5 degrees, so I'll set the saw to that. I need to lower the blade. I've got a scrap of MDF here, it's a half inch, and that's how high I want the blade to be. Lower it down, and then I'm going to Move the fence to the other side of the blade and make adjustments until I get it set up in the right place and then I can make my first cut. In this next cut that I'm making here, I've lowered the blade down to stick up above the surface about 1 16th of an inch, and that will trim off the angled piece that I just cut. So I've got the four pieces cut, and as you can see from the close-up picture, it looks good. This is exactly what I'm looking for, a nice slope like that plus a very clean cut on the shoulder. The next step is to cut the quarter inch by half inch deep dado that receives the panel. And I'm just gonna do that with a single blade, making a series of cuts until all of the material is removed. As far as the profiling goes, these pieces are done. They just need to be sanded a little bit to make them smoother. Although, if your saw is set up right, very little run out, and you're using a very sharp blade, you're not going to have much to sand. This is very smooth already. So, what I've got to do, well, first I should mention is that I couldn't get the quarter inch space here in the middle like I wanted. I started with sock that was three quarters of an inch. And because it was used, I had to plane it down to make it smooth. So I wound up with, you know, pieces that are around 11 sixteenths of an inch. So to compromise for panel thickness plus a little bit of meat on the bottom, I split the difference and I got 3 sixteenths of an inch down here and 3 sixteenths of an inch space for the panel. The next thing to do is to cut the ones that are going to be the rails to the right length. Now I've got my panel here and my panel is six inches wide. So that's gonna be the finished width. Now you want a little bit of a gap on each side of it. So I'm gonna say six and a quarter, that will be an eighth of an inch on each side. And that's what I'll cut these to. Once again, I've tilted the blade 
to that 20 and a half degrees. I've moved my fence onto the other side of the blade so that it's, you know, away from the tilt. And I've already cut a sample from the piece, the off cut of the rails that I cut. That's a good thing to have is some sample pieces to make test cuts. And what you're looking for is for the cut to start even with this shoulder up here and then extend down into this flat part right down here. There's going to be some fiddling around to get this right. But when you have it, you can go ahead and cut the ends on each one of the rails. Now I'm just going to do this freehand by holding the stock up tight against the fence down flat on the table saw and run it through holding it steady. Uh, I'm perfectly fine doing that. I'm, I'm comfortable doing that. I don't, I don't have any worries about touching the blade or getting cut or experiencing a kickback. But if you're queasy about that kind of thing, then you can, you know, use something like this. This is a tenon jig that I made a while back and it fits down over my table saw fence and it clamps the stock in here. This wooden clamp here just holds it on so you can get a real clamp on there to make sure it doesn't move for sure. Well, once again, I've moved the fence to the other side of the blade, brought the blade back up to 90 degrees. I've made a sample cut already in the piece that I was working on before. I've also taken my other scrap and I broke off the back part here so that just the angled piece can go in and I can check the fit. Okay, I'm happy with the fit. It goes together perfectly. That completes that part of the cut. What I need to do next is remove the back part here so that I'll be left with just a tongue that fits right into that groove. Now that I've got the cope done in the styles and rails, I can put it together here temporarily and measure how long the panel can be. I've got eight inches from end to end here. So if I subtract a quarter inch, that would be an eighth inch space on each end. Although you really don't need it for this way because wood doesn't expand and contract along the grain as much as it does across the grain. But I'm gonna give it a little bit anyway. So I'll make the panel the final dimension seven and three quarters inches long and I'll just cut that once again on my mini table saw slit. I'm going to start shaping the panel now. The first thing that I'm going to do is cut a rabbit on the back so that when the panel goes in it'll actually be flush with the back of the styles and rails. So I've got my saw set to cut a half inch deep and I'll make that cut all the way around the back. Then I'll lower the blade to just an eighth of an inch above the surface, move the fence over and finish the cut. To cut the bevel on the front of the panel, this time I will use my jig and I have once again moved the fence to the other side of the blade, tilted the blade this time to 12 degrees, and I'll cut the end grain first on both ends, and then I'll cut the long grain, and that will avoid any chip out. That's the bevel cut on the panel. I intentionally left this raised section right here in the middle to give it a little bit more character. 
Now, if I take the rail and I try to put it in, it won't go all the way in or as far as it needs to go in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut another shallow rabbit around the face and that'll allow it to go in. And it'll also create another shadow line, a little bit more texture. I don't wanna cut this all at once. I'm gonna sneak up on the fit, so I'll make several passes. Okay, that went well, and it fits in there snugly. I've got some sanding to do, so that'll loosen it up even more. But you do want it snug at this point. I'm going to do a dry, bit of a dry fit here. Push the rails in first, and then the styles on next. And see how it looks and it's looking good pretty good so far and I guess pushed together and glued and clamped up that's gonna look fantastic now I'm not gonna go crazy with the sanding on this mainly because it's just a sample but this is where you you know want to spend a little bit of time getting everything straightened out um, like I said earlier if you're saw is set up well and it's a good sharp blade on there you should not have much sanding to do at all to get rid of the saw marks you can also use a scraper or even say a sharp chisel will smooth out a lot of the saw marks in the same way that a scraper will to put this together you really want to center this panel it should fit in the um, grooves here not loosely, but not tightly either. And to try to center it, you can buy these little uh, rubber balls that you can put inside the uh, groove. I've cut pieces of rubber hose here just to put inside. And what they'll do is they'll put pressure on the panel to keep it centered. Plus, if the panel does expand, they can crush. So there won't be any problem with expansion. Another thing about the panel is it really should be finished with whatever you're using, especially if that's stain before you put this together. In my case, I'm not going to be using any stain. It'll be a clear finish. Now, you really only want to get glue on the styles and rails. You don't want to get any on the panel at all. Okay, I'll let it set in the class for about an hour and a half until the glue dry. And I brought it in, did some sanding on it just to flush up the joints, although they were really good to begin with because the joints did go together really tight. Now all I want to do is trim off the ends that are overhanging a little bit. I'm going to do that on the table saw again with my uh, little table saw slit. Slide it up here, make the cut. Then all it needs is a little bit of sanding on the edge to get rid of the saw marks, and it's finished. This is a fairly labor-intensive way to make doors like this. It would be faster to use the bit set, but of course, if you can't afford to buy the bit set, or if you want something that looks different, then you can get with those bits because, you know, they kind of look like everything else. Whereas this does have a distinctive look. And you can, you know, change things. You can make this profile here shallower or even deeper if you want to. You can change the panel, do lots of things, make it step up, make it completely flat, whatever you feel like. Where it would make most sense to do this is if you have a lot of doors to make, that you can set up your saw to do all the cuts one after the other and all the stock that you've built. And it winds up being probably less time, actually, because, you know, the table saw actually cuts quicker than a router would. Plus, 
okay, the router cuts cleaner, but it also has a tendency to burn the wood in places. So you got to spend time, you know, sanding that out. 